Hey guys, welcome to Comic Basics. I'm Joel and today's episode, The History of Doctor Strange, LSD, The Mystic Arts, and An Entire Generation. Of all the comics in existence, none pose more intrigue and have mystified an audience quite like Doctor Strange comics. He's battled demons and entities on the astral plane and in the dark dimension. He was finally introduced into the MCU in 2016, and with him came a series of mind-bending special effects. His history is as, well, strange as any. If you think his colorful imagery, out-of-this-world stories, and trippy backdrops came from the imagination of somebody on drugs, you wouldn't be too far off. Doctor Strange was created by two of the greatest comic book minds in history. Of course, I refer to both Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. He fittingly first appeared in Strange Tales number 110 back in 1963, but wouldn't rise to prominence until a few years after. He was created as a way to bring something new, fresh, and exciting to the Marvel Universe. But for a short while, Stan Lee wasn't even sure about him. Well, we have a new character in the work for Strange Tales. Steve Ditko is going to draw him. It has sort of a black magic theme. The first story is nothing great, but perhaps we can make something of him. It was Steve's idea and I figured we'd give it a chance, although again, we had to rush the first one too much. Due to the success of 2016's movie, his story is fairly well known. Dr. Stephen Strange was a surgeon who thought himself to be the best at what he did. He worked only on most high profile surgeries and amassed wealth that most only dream of. With his work however, came selfishness and egotism. While driving a sports car, Stephen Strange suffers a car accident. As a result of the accident, he is left without the use of his hands. As you may imagine, a world class surgeon with no use in his hands is no different than a regular man. He hears the story of a man, the ancient one, who is capable of healing those who can't be healed. Eventually, after a long search, he finds him and learns that there is more life than money, fame, and luxuries. After his change of heart, the Ancient One begins to teach Strange the mystic arts. Once taught, Doctor Strange takes up residence in the Sanctum Sanctorum and becomes the Sorcerer Supreme. If that were all that there was to the character, his history would be as boring and frustrating as a commercial in your favorite television show. So it's a good thing it's not. When Lee and Ditko created their Doctor Strange comics, I'm certain they knew exactly what they were doing. They had successfully found a way to unleash their most bizarre thoughts, all the while giving a large part of America what they sought. A giant acid trip. His comic books were littered with more color than a rainbow, and beings that could have only have been cooked up while being cooked. But it wasn't just that which made Strange strange. Just think about the names of the items in his book. He wore the cloak of levitation on his back and the eye of Agamotto around his neck. At the time of his initial publication, nobody even came close to who or what Stephen Strange was. Doctor Strange comics drew heavy influence from the Eastern world. Of course, they mostly fed into Eastern stereotypes. For example, the Ancient One was an Asian man who possessed many of the characteristics the Western world would think he'd have. A Fu Manchu mustache. Magical abilities. In a sentence, the Ancient One really was one big stereotype. This wouldn't fly in today's world, but it sure flew in the 1960s. Doctor Strange was special. Up until his appearance, comic book creators struggled to find a way for magic to work in superhero books. Before his times, the realms in which superheroes resided in were bound by the physics of the world in which they existed. His books sought out and successfully found a way for the two magic and superhero world limitations to coexist. For fear of giving him too much credit, his books paved the way for magic users of all kinds. Zatanna, John Constantine, Shaman, Raven. Without Doctor Strange, these characters may never have had the chance to exist. The items that Strange carried on him were, to say the least, interesting. The Eye of Agamotto, for example, isn't as it seems in the MCU. No, it's not the time stone that Thanos needed to complete his gauntlet. Instead, it's a powerful talisman capable of many great feats. The Eye of Agamotto is to Doctor Strange what Superman's powers are to him. It does whatever Strange or his writers needed it to do. It's caused levitation, teleportation, mind manipulation, 
and every other form of shun imaginable. And it's only one of many bizarre artifacts. Doctor Strange rose to new heights during the hippie movement. The hippie movement involved sex, drugs, and a new way of life that didn't cater to the man. The American hippie movement began as a way for young adults to express moral dissatisfaction with what was happening around them. The age group, which shared a love of communal living and drugs, believed that love could change the world. The 1960s saw a rise in freedom of speech. Hippies began speaking out against things that bothered them about the American way. They had grown tired of the media, the advertisers, and the politicians telling them what was important, and they had become fed up with how their country was being run. They wanted to be happy and believe that happiness in itself was a goal in life worth having. Do whatever you want, they'd say, as long as it makes you happy. But it wasn't just the desire for happiness that fueled the movement. At the heart of it all was music. Music united the youth. It gave them a sense of belonging. It gave them a way to talk with each other in a manner that the older generation knew nothing about. The musical influence wasn't just in its rhythm and words, however. With music came personal style, and nothing influenced personal style quite like a person's hair. More specifically, long, Beatles-like hair. No style of hair was as copied as the Beatles haircut. While parents and the old guard hated the cut, the youth embraced it. The cut, with its traditionally long and messy style, characterized the wearer. It told a story that only the youth understood. If you saw a person with a long Beatles-like hairstyle, you knew exactly how they thought, that they hated the government, and that they knew exactly how and where to find the best drugs. Marijuana was prevalent in the hippie movement. For a generation raised to be puppets of society, marijuana allowed them to become more free in their thoughts and actions. The culture believed that in order to change one's values, meant that the way that they perceived the world had to change. And the way to change perception was to give someone a mechanism that allowed them to see the world differently. As much as society tried to curb this and teach the youth about the dangers of marijuana, it didn't work. Those that smoked the drug knew all too well what marijuana actually did. Seeing videos, hearing lectures, and reading about its problems only made the youth feel like they were being lied to. LSD was a chemical drug that allowed the user to experience an out-of-this-world adventure without actually having to leave the world. Anybody who took the drug felt as though they had undergone an enormous change. It was a confusing time. Those who took it felt like they were a different person and nobody, the authorities included, understood why. LSD caused its user to look at the world differently. Suddenly, an object or thought that would horrify anybody off the drug was looked at with beauty and a sense of divine quality. Sir Steve Ditko's beautifully orchestrated drawings, the world that Doctor Strange lived was as lively as an acid trip. Doctor Strange comics were so far-fetched and out there that many readers of the time thought that Ditko was on an acid trip each time he put a pencil to paper. This was as far from the truth as imaginable, but his imagination made people believe it. Certainly Ditko deserves a ton of credit for what he did with Spider-Man, but I'd argue he deserves more credit for Doctor Strange. Just because Ditko chose not to partake in the 60s and 70s pastime doesn't mean that everyone did. Not by a long shot. The 1970s brought a new direction to the Doctor Strange comics. With his new direction came a brand new creative duo. Steve Englehart and Frank Brunner created some of the most mystical and acid-induced runs that the character had ever and would ever see. The pair recounts stories of how they would get together for dinner every couple months, but it wasn't the dinner they were interested in. After dinner, the two would take a hit of something, wait for it to set in, and begin brainstorming new ways and directions to take their character. Over time, the character had become synonymous with the hippie movement. Not only did the pages of his book mimic a euphoric high, but the content inspired the readers to study Eastern mysticism, religion, and philosophy. Strange's books became a living and breathing metaphor for the age that they lived in. Was Doctor Strange a popular character? It depends on who you ask. Among mainstream readers, I'd argue that he wasn't. However, within the psychedelic niche that he lived in, he was practically worshipped. Doctor Strange represented more than just an acid trip. He presented his readers with subjects that were gaining popularity outside of normal circles. The occult, black magic, time travel, dimensional possibilities, mysticism, alternate realities and existences. J. 
Just imagine for a moment taking a hit of acid or a drag of marijuana and engaging in a conversation about the occult. Doctor Strange provided readers a dimension of life that wasn't typically brought up for conversation at the dinner table. There really wasn't any place in the universe or moment in time that was off limits to Doctor Strange. Steve Englehart has admitted that his favorite run with the character happened between issues 12 to 14 of Marvel Premiere. In this story, he basically meets God and sends his readers whirling in their chairs with thoughts of religious grandeur. And his second favorite story? Doctor Strange number 10 to 13. In this story, the Earth is destroyed by one of his many enemies, Baron Mordo, and recreated as it were before the destruction by eternity. This in itself is pretty crazy stuff, but it gets crazier when it's revealed that only Strange remembers that everybody on the planet had, for a time, died. And that was only a small part of the trip that the two took their readers on. During Marvel premiere number 14, Stephen Strange, with the help of the mystic creature Size Neg, Genesis spelled backwards, watches as the entire Marvel Universe is created. Size Neg possessed tremendous power, a power that made him practically a god. Stan Lee was furious with Engelhart and Brunner, and made them print a retraction stating that they hadn't written a story about God or a God. Engelhart eventually worked his way out of the retraction. And how did he do it? He used a fake letter from a priest praising the innovative storytelling. For Engelhart, there was no place that Strange couldn't go. These stories weren't Engelhart's first foray into Doctor Strange. In his early work with the character, he made Strange able to project blasts of energy from his palms. While impressive, it lacked what the character could and would do. When he got a second chance at the character, Engelhart didn't waste it. This time, rather than only being able to shoot beams from his palms, Strange was able to do more. Strange's abilities grew alongside with Engelhart's own fascination with magic, a fascination that followed him through his life. While other writers hired at the time, Chris Claremont, Jim Starlin, and Frank Miller, rose to superstardom, Roger Stern quietly cemented himself as one of, if not the best, Doctor Strange writer in history. Following Engelhart was no easy task, and Stern knew it. Instead of trying to replicate his work, he opted to take the Sorcerer Supreme in a direction that he hadn't gone before. Stern's epic run took the good doctor down a path of true superheroism. Up into his run, Doctor Strange typically did battle with demons and other creatures that threatened the very fabric of Earth's existence. Stern decided that while that aspect made Strange great, it didn't ground him. So on his run, in addition to otherworldly beings, Strange also fought the same villains and petty criminals that other heroes fought. Stern also changed those most familiar to Strange. Gone were his love interest Clea, and now supporting him were his friends Wong and Sarah. He took the character on a wild ride that saw him rescue Clea from Dormammu and witnessed the first meeting between Rama Tut and the Fantastic Four. And to ground him more, Stern's Doctor Strange watched as his love interest Clea died. Since his inception, Doctor Strange seemed out of this world, untouchable by normal life. Roger Stern took that and tossed it right out the window. But his best work was yet to come. In the late 1980s, Roger Stern paired up with eventual Hellboy creator Mike Mignola and gave the world triumph and torment. In this larger than life story, Doctor Strange teams up with Doctor Doom to bring Doom's mother back from Hell and Mephisto. The book brilliantly shows just how dark and edgy that the Marvel Universe could be. Of all the strange stories not to be missed, this one ranks at the top. Then came Brian K. Vaughn, presently of Saga and Why the Last Man fame. Nobody did what Vaughn did. His work, The Oath, sees Doctor Strange traveling the world trying to find a cure for his friend Wong's brain cancer. If Stern grounded Strange, Vaughn buried him alive. What makes Vaughn's Doctor Strange comics so incredible is that they bring the character his most basic and instinctual roots. It takes the all-powerful Sorcerer Supreme and reminds him that there are things out of his control. Vaughn presented Doctor Strange as a man capable of bending reality and incapable of healing his friend. In short, he humanized him. Doctor Strange comics offered what no book could or can offer, a way to experiment with the medium. The stories were in our bizarre, trippy, and downright outlandish. And that's why he gained such a notorious following. The X-Men, Spider-Man, Fantastic Four, and the Avengers couldn't do what he could do, go where he could go, or offer what he could offer. Through his psychedelic imagery, Doctor Strange ignited the imagination of an entire generation. He became a symbol for a changing nation and forced his viewers to look at the world just a little different. In a different era, he may not have become as important or as followed as he did, but in his era, there was no stopping his success. 
and I'm going to wrap it up here. I hope you guys enjoyed that, and if you did, please hit that subscribe button and turn those notifications on. Both really do help this channel grow. If you have any suggestions for videos or any characters you want me to dig deep into, please leave it in the comments below and I'll see if I can get to it for you. Thanks guys, I really do appreciate you coming by, and I hope you'll come by again. Until then, I'll catch you next time.